Hey everyone, welcome to a very interesting video. This is going to be the first non-scripted video I have on VARS in probably a long time considering most of the videos that I do on this channel are scripted. I've done a few like live commentary topics before on my second and third channel, but for my main channel, this is the first time I'm going to be doing it. A few weeks back, there was a comment, or I think there were a few comments, asking me what my thoughts are on if there was ever to be a League of Legends 2, just like how there's an Overwatch 2 right now. Which champions would I want to have in the new version, and which ones do I scrap? I thought that would be an interesting video, but of course, since there are, what, 150-something champions, if I were to make a script, that would be very, very cumbersome. So I thought it would be more fun to do it live for the first time and you get to hear awkward VARs because usually I rely on post-production and the magic of audio editing to cut out the weird stuff but who knows maybe this will be more enjoyable. Really quickly though before we continue I have a quick shout out for today's sponsor Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. Star Guardians and anime themed events so I thought it was fitting. Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. are both Japanese subscription boxes full of candy, snacks, and other treats delivered to you every month. Inside every box is a booklet that shows you everything within the boxes, and they usually go by themes. Being Asian myself, I'm a big fan of Asian snacks and I buy them pretty often, so this is a convenient way to get my hands on more of them. For this season of Tokyo Treat is called Sugoi Summer. August is the premier summer holiday, also known as Natsuyasumi, so the box of the month is filled with limited edition summer themed treats like strawberry cream soda and watermelon seed candy. As for Sakura Ko, their theme is the Okinawa Retreat. For this month, they're partnering with the Ogimi Villages to make snacks with ingredients grown straight from there, like the Shikoasa Manju and the Okinawa Cinnamon Cookies. The main difference between Tokyo Treat and Sakura Ko is that the former focuses more on popular snacks while the latter taps into the more authentic traditional cultures, so you can choose between one or the other or both. Speaking of which, I have discounts for each one. If you check out the links on screen or in the description, you get 5 bucks off your first order of each one. Please consider picking one up, it really helps out the channel if you do. Thanks again to Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co for sponsoring the video, but for now, let's get back into it. So these are the tiers. We have Essential, which as the name implies, they are mandatory. They have to be in LOL 2. Again, if it wasn't clear, there's not actually a League of Legends 2 coming out. This is a hypothetical video. It's all in good fun. Or who knows, maybe there is a League 2 coming out that we don't know about. Top priority indicates a champion who is extremely valuable to have in League of Legends. They may not be a necessity per se, but they're definitely something that I feel like would be it would be better for the game if they weren't there. Then we have good, but may require gameplay adjustments in that they're pretty good, as in they would be a good choice to have for LOL 2. There just might need to be a few tweaks because of some, I guess, degenerate gameplay strategy or maybe something wrong with their kit. Then we have only after major rework or changes in that there's potential for them to be there, but I would like them to be updated or changed in some way because maybe people are not enjoying a certain mechanic or stuff like that. Probably not is sort of like the category where I'm going to put a champion where, I mean, I'm sure one or two people in this world would want them in out of like personal bias, but I don't think the general community would really enjoy it or they just wouldn't care. Then we have Hell No, which is very obvious, no one wants them. I don't think anyone wants them. <laughs> I'll try to be as unbiased as possible. Oh right, we have one more uh, category called Should Be Removed from LOL 1, let alone consideration for LOL 2. And let's just really quickly go ahead and put, where is he? Aha! There we go. Nice and comfy. So yeah, these are going to be the categories. I'll try to be as unbiased as possible, even though I've kind of already broke my promise on that, but who cares? Everyone knows that Yona is never going to go into LOL 2 anyway. All right, let's get started. We're going to go in alphabetical order. So this list is missing Belveth and Nyla, or Nila, but spoiler alert, they're going to be in the hell no category. I don't think anyone wants them in LOL 2. It has up to uh, Renata Glass, but they also have a few other like characters. We have Alun, who is Aphelios' sister. I don't know why she's here. And then over here we have Silco. Now Silco is an interesting character because while I love him a lot in Arcane, he doesn't have a move set. I know he's in Legends of Runeterra, or is that? Yeah, it's Legends of Runeterra. He never actually participates in combat. He's more of like a criminal mastermind kind of guy. So I don't know what his kit would be. Let's get started. So for Aatrox, I'm gonna put him in top priority. I think his design is pretty good. It teaches you the basics of spacing and he's a juggernaut with a very, I guess, raid boss drain tanking kind of playstyle. And I think that would be really beneficial to have since it's like, you know, it's a pretty standard kind of champion. A lot of people like to complain about the fact that he overheals a lot, but usually I would say he's one of the more respectable top lanes out there. Ari is essential. 
She captures the elusive mobile mage. Oh, that's pretty much it. She's like an elusive mobile mage. She has very simple abilities and a very good kind of like altogether carry play style. Akali, I would say only after major rework or changes. Now, actually, I'll put her good, but may require gameplay adjustments. We like to meme on her for being one of Riot's most ridiculous reworks, but if you think about it, after all the adjustments, I would say she's finally in a good place. Not the most fun to deal with, but but again, we're trying not to involve personal bias here. Akshan, hell no. I don't think anyone. I don't think anyone likes him. Let's be honest. Alistar is essential, he's your support, frontline tank, kind of uh, very generic kind of guy. Alun, I'm gonna put him probably not just because I don't think she has any purpose. Amumu is also essential, he teaches you the basics of jungle, he's got a very decent clear, easy to play, and he's also, in a similar fashion to Alistar, he is just a very solid tank, very easy to understand. We need these kinds of champions, even if they may be really brain dead, because we still want to make it easier for new players to get the hang of the game. Anivia, I would say top priority, good control mage, nothing really else going on with her. Annie is essential, she teaches you the basics of a mage, and very easy to play, very easy to pick up. Aphelios? Probably not. He's cool. I like his kit, even though I trashed on it in the past for being 200 years. I, I just think it'd be a little bit too convoluted and not really a little too extraneous in my opinion. Ash is essential, teaches you ADC. Aurelian Soul, only after major reworker changes. He is getting reworked. I don't know when you're going to be seeing this video, but they did announce uh, Riot Games that he's going to be getting a major update, so we'll see what happens there. But for the time being, I'll put him in the middle. Azir, probably not. Similar to Aphelios, he he can work, but I think he's too much of a balanced nightmare at the moment, and it would be more difficult for him. It'll be more work than it's actually worth if we were to port him over to LOL 2. By the way, since there are so many champions, we're going to be going kind of fast. Bard? Um, I'm torn. I'm going to put him in good. Blitzcrank Essential. He's your kind of catcher type support. Fits that job pretty well. Brand? Yeah, I would say good, but may require gameplay adjustments. Braum? Yeah, he'd be good. He's a very good defensive tank. Dalastar is your engaged tank. Braum is your defensive tank. And uh, Blitzcrank is your catcher tank. Caitlyn? Like, I should probably make a new category in one moment. Decent choice. Like, they don't necessarily have a gameplay problem, but I don't really consider him- I don't really consider them that much of a necessity. So this would be like their middle ground. Caitlyn would be here. Camille, only after major rework or changes. She's very polarizing of a champion. Cassiopeia, probably- I would say decent choice. We would- we definitely want to have a machine gun type ADC. I don't know how good it would be- no, actually I'll put her here since there definitely needs to be a change with her. She is too big of a counter to certain champions that I think while it's important to have counters, it's not good if she just shuts them down by existing, kind of thing. Cho'Goth, he needs some gameplay adjustments, he's kind of outdated, but he's a pretty solid champion overall, I think he's pretty underrated. Corky, decent choice. Darius, top priority, we want a hyper-aggressive Juggernaut with good carry potential. Diana, hmm, I would say this one too. Draven, Mr. Draven, essential. I'm totally not biased by this. Dr. Mundo, good? No, actually I'll put him in essential. We want- we definitely want a few brain dead champions and stat checkers just for the sake of making it easier for new players to pick up certain roles and he would be a good introduction to top lane. Echo, he's a good champion I think we can put in there. Uh, Elise, also, mm, decent choice. Evelyn, I don't like her personally, I hate her, but in the spirit of fairness, she is... Yeah, we can actually put her in top priority. She teaches you the importance of stealth. Ezreal is essential. Fiddlesticks is top priority because... Mm, I'll put in decent choice. Viara, only after major rework or changes, I'm severely against percent max health true damage, and I think we all should be. Her design's interesting. I see it, and I can understand it, but the way it's implemented feels very once again, polarizing, similar to Camille. She's a very polarizing champion. Fizz, decent choice. Galio, top priority. Gangplank, uh, hmm. I want to put him in decent choice because his playstyle is interesting in the mid to late game. In the early game, not so much. So I might put him in good, may require. Garen is essential. Nar, uh, probably not. To this day, people are too uncomfortable with him when it comes to his like transformation mechanic. Gragas is a decent choice. Graves may require gameplay adjustments. He fluctuates too much between hyper carry and irrelevant. So actually, mm, I might put him here then. Gwen? Hell no. Hecarim? Decent choice. Heimerdinger? A uh, decent choice. Not many people like him and not many people play him, but I can't really say that he's a bad choice either. Alawi? Probably not. Aurelia, only after major reworker changes. I'm gonna put the uh, the wife with the top lane all in here because as much as I personally don't like them, there is a reason why they should, or there's incentive to have them, right? We do want some hyper carry top laners just so that top lane has some agency if they want to play more high skill cap champions. Ivern, hell no. Janna, essential. We want a defensive enchanter support. Jarvan, he's a pretty good champion. I think he should be in top lane. Jax, he requires gameplay adjustments. Very, very one dimensional. 
Uh, oh, actually, maybe top priority. So we do still want some hard hitters. Like if we look at the, the top two, Jax is the only skirmisher in this list so far. Yeah, it'd probably be better to have him. Jace, decent choice. Jin, top, but he's essential. Come on, who doesn't want Jin, right? If we have we have Ezreal for the skill shots, we have Jin because not everyone likes to play hyper attack, you know, attack move carries, and he would be the perfect choice for that if you want to use a different marksman. Jinx, high priority or top priority. Kaisa, probably not, or only after major rework of changes. She very heavily deviates from super OP to needing, desperately needing buffs, just because every time they decide to buff her, they usually buff her in the wrong ways, and the problem is they kind of have no choice but to buff her incorrectly since everything they do is incorrect. In the sense that, like, that's just the way Kaisa's designed. Callista, probably not. She has too many problems. Karma, uh, top priority. She teaches you a very good balance between, like, offensive, defensive support. And she's also a good flex pick. Karthus, hell no. This champion is, his existence is just so wrong. Like, a champion that rewards you for dying, in a sense. Cast it in. Only after major rework or changes. I like the fact, or actually I'll put him here. He's supposed to be an anti-mage, but the way it's executed on makes him feel more like an assassin hyper carry. Katarina, mm, we do want, we do want an assassin. We want a couple assassins as much as everyone hates them. So I'll put her here. Or I'll put a decent choice. Kale, probably not. Definitely not in her current state. Or no, she'll need a rework or changes. I like the fantasy of a late game scaler, but in her current position, yeah, no, she needs another adjustment. Kane, hell no. This champion fosters the most toxic jungle ego you can ever imagine, in like Master, Grandmaster, Challenger, and he's also really annoying to deal with. Kennen, probably not. He's a one- I don't like a champion who lives and dies by their ultimate. I know that sounds kind of intuitive, or I know that sounds kind of hypocritical considering I put- where is it? I put um, like a few other very alt-reliant champions, but for Kennen, that's literally all he is. He's just his ultimate. Kha'Zix, top priority. He's a really good assassin, and while he can get frustrating at times, he definitely is one of the more carry-oriented junglers, and we don't have that yet. Kindred, probably not. Way too feast or famine. The idea of a marksman, like, I would say Graves is executed on, or Graves executes on the marksman jungle fantasy more than Kindred. Kled, ah, decent choice. He, ah, <laughs> oh, this guy. This guy. I love him and hate him. All right, we're going to put him here. Kogma, probably not. Or only after major reworker changes. It's similar to the Kale mentality of like he's useless early game, but late game he starts destroying people. LeBlanc, decent choice, I would say. Lee Sin, I'm gonna put him in top priority, mostly because I actually think that for all the cocky, arrogant Lee Sin main one tricks out there and the kind of sort of toxic mentality that people have on him or the toxic perception people have of him, I actually think he's a pretty good jungler to pick up if you wanna play a very early game aggressive oriented jungle. Leona, is essential. Lilia, probably not. Lissandra, I would put in... Having some locked... Having a lockdown mage would be nice. We have Vanny, a little bit of variety. Lucian, essential. Very skill... High skill oriented ADC, good to have. Lulu, I don't like her, but we'll put her in top priority. Everyone likes to complain about Lulu, but in reality, she's not actually that... She's a very easy champion to understand. She doesn't do too much more than what she's supposed to do and what she's allowed to do. It's just that what she does can be very frustrating for a lot of people. Lux, she's essential. She teaches you artillery mage stuff, and she's also one of the most popular champions in League. Malphite, may require gameplay... No, after major reworker changes. I want to put him higher up because I think it's cool. It's similar to Kassadin, only on a more, I guess, degenerate scale, where it's good to have champions that counter certain classes or certain, like, categories of other champions, but for them to do it, they have to double down on it. Like, Malphite, he's supposed to be the anti-AD, anti-attack speed champion, but in reality, what he ends up turning into is a Q-spamming lane poke champion. That's about it. Mosahar, only after major reworker- or no, I'll put him here. It, or, actually, probably not. It's kind of like Kennen, where he lives and dies by his ultimate, and everything else is just a more inferior version of something else. Maokai, put him in top priority, he's a really good tank, very sustain heavy tank. Master Yi, hell no, this champion. I know I talked about like the carry jungler or like, you know, someone like Jax, but Master Yi is just, he's just unhealthy for the game. Misfortune, top priority, she's a lane bully ADC, pretty good. Mordekaiser, I'm gonna put him in good, but may require gameplay adjustments. His death realm is way too balanced nightmarish of an ability. Like, I would be so happy if they could have Mordekaiser's current passive Q, W, and E, and just give back his ult ultimate, which was the ghost thing. Because death realm, it's such a lazy ability, and I think it just does too much for the wrong reasons. Morgana is essential. Nami, top priority. Nasus, uh, probably not. He's a very FU champion to his team and to the enemy team. He kind of plays single player. I don't think it's very healthy for the game. 
Nautilus would be in top priority, or actually essential would work. Uh, Nico, probably not. Nidalee, decent choice. Nocturne, only after major rework or changes, very stat checky, and his ultimate, like, you know, you guys know, like, the way he plays, it feels like a less engaging version of other divers. Nunu, essential. Or, no, top priority. I love him. Do I think he's the most necessary champion? Not really. Olaf, probably, or, well, he just got reworked. Maybe decent choice. No, probably not. He, he's just, he invalidates, like, one of the most essential parts of the game. And it's kind of like, what's another champion? Where, it's like Graves, where if he gets buffed, he's super pig ban OP and constantly abused, and when he gets nerfed, no one plays him. Oriana is the top priority champion. Fantastic design. Orin? Decent choice. Pantheon. Oh, I'm trying to fight my internal bias right now. <laughs> Decent choice. Well, we're actually kind of missing like roaming macro oriented early gamers. Probably top priority then. Poppy, top priority or a decent choice. Pike, hell no. This champion, every single time you bring up this champion, the only response you get are complaints. Kiana, no. Quinn, only after a major rework or change, I want her to be able to work. As much as I hate ranged top laners, I want her to be able to work. She has such a fantastic premise and such a cool idea. Just the way it's executed on, too polarizing. Rakan, decent choice. And by extension, I'm going to put Zaya in decent choice because they're a package deal. Not really. You really don't see these two together anymore in both in-game and lore, kind of. But I still think it would be fitting to put them together. Ramis is, in my opinion, a more, a better version of Malphite, a better design Malphite. I'm going to put in top priority. Rek'Sai, decent choice. Rel, uh, may require gameplay adjustments. I like her kit. Not many people do though, so we'll put we'll put her there. Uh, Madame Glask. I'll put her in. Probably not. She's. I don't know. I like her design. I personally really like her design. I think I was initially apprehensive about bailout. Then I realized it's not as big of a deal as I made it out to be. But I also don't think she would really be beneficial for the game. Or I feel like she would cause more annoyance. No, I'll put her in. Yeah, no, I'll put her in. Pro probably not doesn't mean the champion has no chance of getting in there. They're only, only if they're in hell no or this category here would I say they have zero chance of getting in if I had the choice. It would just be like, th this would be after you've made the initial roster and like a few years down the road, you're thinking, okay, maybe we can add these guys back in. But that's kind of like the rationale I have. Renekton, decent choice. Or top priority. Mm, good, but may require gameplay adjustments. Mostly because he has a very good purpose, and in all honesty, he's a pretty fair champion. He has very clear strengths and weaknesses, but his playstyle is definitely too kind of like stat checky, one-dimensional, in the sense that he takes advantage of how stupid the player is, as in if the player has no idea how to deal with him, he's gonna win, and if the player does know how to deal with him, he's gonna lose. Which, you could, I guess, make the same case for Garen, so maybe I'll put him in top priority. Rengar, decent choice. A bit more controversial than Cossacks overall, so I'm gonna put him here. Riven, major rework or changes. Similar to this, so we had the four waifus of top lane. Camille, Riven, Fiora, and Irelia. Rumble, may require gameplay adjustments. He struggles from a bit of an internal, kind of, design dilemma. Rise, only after his 21st rework. <laughs> this guy needs another rework. Samira, hell no. Sejuani, decent choice. Senna, major reworker changes. I never really enjoyed the whole idea of a marksman support because what I'm noticing now is that people are just playing her when they're autofilled support and don't feel like playing an actual team player kind of support. Seraphine, I would actually say decent choice. I know this sounds like a hot take, but gameplay wise, she's not half bad. Like everyone gave her a lot of crap for being a very, I guess, disconnected champion from reality in the reality that is Runeterra and League of Legends lore. But in game, as a champion, I think she's pretty cool. Set, decent choice, very punch heavy, kind of bruiser. We already have a we have a few juggernauts up here already. Shaco, no, absolutely not. I would actually put him here, but this spot is only reserved for one. Shen, top priority. Macro heavy tank. People don't like him in pro play because he feels kind of unfairly broken for his roaming potential, but I think he's a very well designed champion. Shivana, major rework, she needs a rework. Singed, same thing. Scion, gameplay adjustments. Sivir, essential. She's got a basic playstyle. I like the rework they gave to her. I think um, we're missing a few ADCs up here, so we'll add a few. Skarner, I would put him in decent choice. I think he's a, he's one of the most unpopular champions, or one of the least popular champions in the game. But he has a good function, and I think not many people are aware of that, or appreciative of that. Sona, I'll put her in... Good, but may require gameplay adjustments. I rank her higher than Seraphine, primarily because she focuses on one role, but I don't want to put her up here because she's also a very button masher champion. That's not to say she's easy to play. She's actually rather skill expressive, 
but mechanically speaking, all you're doing is just pressing buttons. Soraka, essential. I know she also presses buttons, but she has a few kind of like skill shots, her Q and her E, and the timing on her ultimate. Swain, gameplay adjustments. I don't know what adjustments he would need, but he needs them. Silas, probably not. Syndra, decent choice. Tom Kench, hell no. This guy, no one enjoys this champion. No one enjoys playing against him. Name one person who's okay with Tom Kench. No one. This guy is just inherently not fun to deal with. Talia, decent choice. No, actually, I would dare I say put her in top priority. I think she is a pretty, especially after her rework, she has a very interesting niche, and we do need some anti-dash champions. Talon, I actually kind of liked his old version better, to be all on in, in all honesty. The before his rework, before he became an Assassin's Creed knockoff. Tarek, he needs a major rework. Timo. We need to put him in here because he's Timo. Come on, right? Like, or well, you can't make League of Legends 2 without its mascot. Thresh. Absolutely essential. Tristana, decent choice. Trundle, he needs his rework. Trendemir also needs his rework. Twist of Fate, essential, very macro oriented. Twitch, top priority. Udir needs a rework. We're going through here because it's getting kind of long. Uh, Urgot, probably decent choice. I don't want to put him in top priority. I don't think he's that great for the game. He's a good champion. He's very well designed. And I'm, I don't know if you're going to be watching this video first or the Urgot rework. I'm guessing you're watching this one first, but I like him. I think his design, his rework was fantastic. But in terms of objectively how he is as a champion, some people might not agree with him in essential or top priority. Varus, Mr. Memo. Uh, rework would be nice. Vayne, I don't like true damage. But at least on Vayne, it's healthier than Fiora. I'll put her in gameplay adjustments. Vagar, decent choice. Velkaz, I want to put him in top priority. I think even though he's a newer champion compared to like some other traditional mages, I think his gameplay is fantastic. Vex, decent choice. Viego, no. Like, as you can tell, this champ, th th I don't think anyone disagrees with this list, right? Like, maybe some people might interject by saying, like, you know, they might defend Master Yi or they might defend Kiana, but. Everyone else, I think we're all in agreement, right? Yeah. Victor, decent choice. No, he needs gameplay adjustments. Vi, same thing. Vladimir, probably not. That's that's a bold take. Major rework. I think he needs a rework again. Volibear, top priority. Warwick, essential. Yeah, he, we need him in essential. He definitely is needed. Wukong, maybe decent choice, right? I don't think he needs any... Ma or he might need a, a tweak or two, I think. Zerath would be in essential. Xinjiao, maybe top priority. People don't like his design. He's definitely very linear, but again, we do need a few linear champions because for like new, new players and just in case some people don't feel like mastering a very complex champion. Yasuo, decent choice. No, he needs gameplay adjustments. His win wall, it's just win wall. If they like reworked it in some way to where it's not as broken, then I feel like people would be more tolerant of him. York, probably not. His concept just won't work. Yumi, hell no. Zack, top priority. No, decent choice. He's fun, but I don't think he really... He doesn't really bring anything to the table that is like super important for the game. Zed, I'm putting him in top priority even though like for Talon I put something. It's just because Zed, we need a very skill expressive outplay assassin and I think out of all of them, I would say Zed is the more difficult one. Talon, he gets kind of one dimensional. After a while, I know you have to like understand your windows and like your timing and stuff, but I kind of link said to where's where's Katarina? Oh, she's in decent choice. Mm, yeah, no, like we were we're missing a few important like kind of check boxes, and I think Zed is important for that one. Zeri probably not. Ziggs decent choice. Zillion essential. I think he's a cool champion. Zoe hell no. And Zyra. Good, but may require gameplay adjustments. I think that will be it. So this is not ordered, by the way. It's not like I'm not saying that Ari is more beneficial or more essential than Zillion. It's just an alphabetical order. But this is my list. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And I hope you enjoyed the different structure of this video. I apologize that it's all over the place. I know I'm usually well organized in my video structure, but I thought it would be a nice change of pace. I thought it was uh, pretty fun. I think I might do this again if you want me to. Let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this style of video or if you want me to just go back to doing scripted narrative commentary. I don't mind either way. But if you enjoyed this one, please be sure to leave a like. I really appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at VarsVam. Join my Discord server. And I don't really have another video to liken this to. I guess you can watch my 10 champions that I want deleted video. They're kind of similar. But for now, thank you all so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.